Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk him off. What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined as always by Matt Moreno. And Matt, I know we're in the midst of a lockout. I know that there's no major league signing or news going on. But you know what? We might have some actual activity right around the corner because January 15th is the beginning of the international signing period. It starts January 15th. It runs through December 15th. And this is a season, a period of time in which the Dodgers have been active. They have $5.2 million to spend. That is the lowest of three different tiers that you're in based on how you finished the previous season. But a year ago on January 15th, the Dodgers signed 22 players in one day. We know they are linked to one guy in particular already, Samuel Munoz, who is a 17-year-old shortstop out of the Dominican Republic. MLB.com has him as the number seven prospect. So I'll ask the big picture question. International signing period? January 15th? We fired up, Matt? Uh, yeah. Not too much, unfortunately. Uh, For me, it's tough to really get uh, too invested in this stuff because, like you just said, you know, it's 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, and look, credit to them for putting themselves in these positions to sign with major league teams. Like, it's an amazing accomplishment. I guess from the Dodgers' perspective, it makes sense that they would be linked to a shortstop. Maybe they're finding uh, Corey Seager's replacement. Even better. There you go. See? Uh, but no, I mean, the international free agent, you know, it's it can be interesting, I guess, from the standpoint of when you hear, oh, the Dodgers are interested in, yeah. you know, a top 10 prospect type thing. And then you kind of remember their name and track them like, oh, now they're playing for the Quakes and then they're up at double A and triple A. And next thing you know, maybe they're making their MLB debut. But, you know, what's interesting, I think, is like you just touched on the Dodgers are going to be in the lowest tier in terms of bonus pool money. And that obviously makes things uh, a little more difficult on them, maybe needs them to be a little bit more creative, which they've proven capable in the past. But, you know, it's not just an open market where, hey, we're big spenders. We can throw all this money at the top international free agents and kind of stock our farm system that way, which, as we saw last year, you know, on the position player side, the Dodgers are running a little thin, at at least. And I know the international free agents don't necessarily fit this bill, but definitely at the AAA level uh, when they needed bench players that they weren't necessarily there. yeah it's fascinating I think the 17 year old point you make is a good one like the fluctuation on these guys is is unbelievable and oftentimes what's funny is the guys that they signed for like fifty thousand dollars this the lower end sometimes those guys hit and the guys that they signed for big money don't end up hitting I'm looking at Justin Lorber his top 20 prospects in the Dodgers organization interestingly enough 10 of the top 20 were international free agent signings so we're talking guys like Diego Cartaya who he had number third at these are his midseason rankings so old rankings but Diego Cartaya was third Andy Pajes fifth Miguel Vargas sixth Wilmon Diaz eighth those are four of the top eight who were all international free agent signings Jose Ramos Luis Rodriguez Yorbi Vivas Hyun Il Choi, uh, Alex DeJesus, and Eddie Leonard. You've got Lionel Valera as well. So th- all those guys, international free agent signing. So I think that's where you can get a little bit excited. This is a realm in which the Dodgers have done incredibly well. Yeah. They've had some ho- high-profile misses, yes. But they've also had guys that have turned out to be fantastic prospects. And so <clears throat> the Dodgers, historically, part of their, their history is being the team that goes into – you know, the Dominican Republic and signs these guys. They have always been known as an international franchise extending to Korea, extending to Japan, Cuba. So I think that's why you get excited if you're the Dodgers, but you also have to temper it and saying, we're not going to actually know if this was a successful international free agent signing period for like three years at least. And that's when they become prospects. And then five years until they're actually maybe at the major league level. I mean, we're talking about um, Cartaya, for example, they signed him in 2018. They signed him in 2018. He's probably still two years away from the major leagues, at least. So just to give you some context yeah. there. So I think it's exciting. Again, they're they're linked to this guy who's the number seven guy on MLB.com. I always get fired up by that. I'm like, great. You tell me we're signing the number seven of something. I'm into it. Of course, there's probably more signings to come, uh, but, but very interesting there. So hopefully we'll have some names to talk about a week from now. Um, January 15th is the beginning. Again, the Dodgers very active on day one a year ago. A lot of these agreements are kind of in place. They just can't be formally signed until January 15th. That's how they get linked. So we'll see what happens. International signing period opens on January 15th. That's Matt Moreno. My name's Jeff Spiegel. Make sure you're tuned into DodgerBlue.com, Dodger Blue 1958 on everywhere on social media, as well as here at the Dodger Blue YouTube channel, because as soon as some of these names become official, we have something to talk about. We'll make sure to get you those names as quickly as we possibly can. That's Matt. My name's Jeff. We appreciate you joining us. We'll see you next time.